CSS STP supporting information has taken a whole new turn. But don't panic, I got you. Together, we'll tackle this journey with confidence to make your application stand out. So let's dive in. If you're coming across my channel for the first time, you're welcome. My name is Cynthia. I'm a first year trainee in cancer genomics. In this video, I'll focus on cancer genomics, which is what I know best, but the tips can be transferred to any STP specialty. So this year's supporting information has three sections and each section has questions they want you to provide answers to. The first section wants you to address the question, what is your motivation for applying to the STP, including your chosen specialty? Here's how I'd approach it. I'll start with a personal story or a defining moment. So my fascination with cancer began when I lost my grandmother to it. At that time, I was studying biochemistry and I kept asking myself, what can be done to make sure no one else passes through the pain she went through? And that defining moment became my motivation to use cutting edge science to fight cancer. And that is still what is fueling my passion for cancer genomics still today. Next, I will explain how the STP is the ideal pathway to help me achieve my goal of using cutting edge science to fight cancer. At this point, I'll talk about my masters and how I focus my optional modules and dissertation on cancer to help me understand the disease better. But along the line, I discovered the STP and I'll emphasize on how the STP provides a perfect opportunity for me to combine cutting edge science with patient-centered care. I'll just highlight the unique opportunity the program offers and just spend a few paragraphs talking about the STP generally, the advantages and what I stand to gain, working along multidisciplinary team, having access to cutting edge genomic technologies within the NHS and a lot of opportunities the STP offers. Next, I'll tie my motivation to my goal and passion. I would mention my curiosity about the specialty. I'm curious about understanding targeted therapy and precision medicine. I'll mention my fascination about the future advancement in the specialty like liquid biopsies and how it will improve patient outcomes. I'll, come. I'll mention how this aligns with the NHS core value of patient-centered care and how this will ultimately improve the quality of life of patients. If you look at what I've done, you will see that this ties back to why I'm passionate about the specialty and how the STP aligns perfectly with my aspiration. Next, let's do something quickly. Click the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm waiting. Have you done that? Okay. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Next session wants you to address the role of a healthcare scientist in your chosen specialty. For me, this session wants to assess my understanding of who a clinical scientist in cancer genomics is. So I would use examples to highlight the transferable skills I have that makes me the best person for the role. I will talk about how healthcare scientists in cancer genomics play an important role in analyzing and interpreting genetic information and data. At this point, I want you to note that a clinical scientist in cancer genomics does not do wet lab work. They mainly analyze and interpret, and I'm sure it will be the same thing with clinical scientists in other specialties. So I want you to research clearly to understand who a clinical scientist in your chosen specialty is. Don't miss that. If you miss it with a genetic technologist or a technician, that does the wet lab work it means you don't even understand the role you are applying for next i'll highlight the experiences and skills i have to match this don't forget that you're also highlighting how you meet the person specification for the STP. So this section that is talking about the role of a healthcare scientist in cancer genomics, I'll go to the person specification for the STP and tick off some of the scientific skills. So with my dissertation, I'll talk about ability to conduct research, search through scientific literature, and some of those scientific skills on the person specification for the STP. So now I've answered their question to show that I understand clearly who a clinical scientist is. And I've gone back to the person specification for the STP to tick off some of the scientific skills. And I've demonstrated how my experience prepared and has laid a perfect foundation for me to be a good clinical scientist in the future. Now let's get to the last session. What skills and experience do you have that makes you an ideal trainee clinical scientist? Now the question is, who is an ideal trainee clinical scientist? I'll go back to the core person specification for the STP and address some of the transferable and personal skills. Reflecting on this, I'll be tempted to talk about all my skills in this section, but considering that this section has only 250 words, it will not be able to contain everything I would like to write, which is why I've decided to talk about my scientific skills in the second section. I'll talk about my passion and my curiosity in the first section. Then this section with just 250 words, I'll focus on talking about a 
trainee clinical scientist. So with what I've done so far, let me describe an ideal trainee clinical scientist to you guys. Then it will be left for you to decide which skills or which part of the core person specification for the SCP will you use to answer this question. And with what I've done so far, I'll just tell you guys about the person specification that in my opinion highlights who an ideal trainee clinical scientist is. Then it will be left for you to just decide which one you are going to go with to just highlight the skills you have that makes you an ideal trainee clinical scientist. Explain analytical, scientific and clinical aspect of the job to a variety of people, including scientific colleagues and clinical professionals. Make formal presentation to a group of colleagues. As an aspiring STP trainee, you have no idea the number of presentations waiting for you. So I would use examples of presentation skills developed during my master's when I presented my findings and experience from previous jobs to address this. Next, I'll talk about Ability to work autonomously in the planning and execution of their own work and under the guidance of their departmental supervisor. Guys, this is everything about a trainee clinical scientist. You're very independent. No one is going to be chasing you around. Have you done this? Have you done that? Have you not done this? loads of reading, loads of studies. There are so many things you have to catch up with. So you need to demonstrate your ability to work autonomously in the sense that it's your responsibility to read up what you need. It's your responsibility to catch up with the university part. It's your responsibility to tell your training officer what you need. It's your responsibility to let the training officer know the aspect you need more training or more experience. So you need to be able to work independently under the guidance of your supervisor. To address this, I I'll use my dissertation to show how I worked independently in carrying out my lab work under the guidance of my supervisor. Next, I'll talk about good organization and planning skills, ability to perform a wide range of duties according to the job description. Guys, this summarizes how I'm currently juggling the STP. Let me create a mental picture for you. I have exams on Tuesday. My histopathology rotation starts next week. And in each rotation, you have 10 training activities, one DOPS and one CBD. And from my previous rotation in cancer genomics, I had some training activities that carried over. So immediately after my exams, I need to finish up this training activity so that when I start my histopathology, I won't have anything holding me back. But in doing that rotation, I have like 12 training activities I need to make sure I've covered. And in March, I have 3,000 words essay to cover. Sometime around April and May, I have more university lectures to do. So do you get the point now? The only way on earth you can achieve all this is to have good planning and organization skills. I'll talk about how I'm good with planning and multitasking because you have to multitask in order to meet up with all this. So I'll highlight my multitasking skills, my planning skills, my organization skills. I'll give you examples of how I've used to do this to catch up with things I need to do. So reflect on your experience and think about an experience that will help you to demonstrate a good organization and planning skill to make you an ideal trainee clinical scientist. Next, I'll talk about demonstrates value and principles of the NHS constitution as a whole with a focus on patient-centered care. To address this, I'll talk about my previous role as a healthcare assistant where I had first-hand experience demonstrating the NHS core value. I'll talk about compassion, how I listen to my patient and attend to them individually, basically showing patient-centered care. Again, it doesn't have to be an NHS experience. It can be from any of your previous job or just living your daily life. How do you show compassion? How do you demonstrate compassion or any of the NHS value? Just reflect on your experience and kind of talk about it. Or whatever skills you have that makes you an ideal trainee clinical scientist, you just talk about it in this section. This is just me telling you guys about the core person specification I feel would help me highlight who an ideal trainee clinical scientist is. So that sums it up. This is how I will approach the supporting information if I were applying for the STP this year. The key is to show your passion, your curiosity, your understanding of the role and your suitability for the program while aligning everything to the core person specification for the STP, the job description and the NHS core value. To all of you applying this year, you've got this. I'm rooting for you.
Take your time to reflect on your journey. Highlight your unique experiences and connect them to the specialty you are aiming for. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more STP tips. Drop a comment if you have any questions or any part of the application you want me to cover. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram, STP with Cynthia. I drop tips there as well. And also share frequent experience and my journey on the STP. Good luck with your application. I wish you the very best.